All right, God bless you today, Southwest Louisiana, and those that are watching in different parts of the country and around the world. This is Bishop Albert Thompson, Senior Pastor of the He Is Risen World Outreach Ministry here in the city of Lafayette, Louisiana. I tell you, God is good, and he's good all the time. Uh, we're just excited, excited, excited about today's show. Listen, if you want to uh, reach out to us, why don't you reach out to us? Uh, email me at bishopalbert at outlook.com. That's bishopalbert at outlook.com. All right? And I'm just so grateful today because we got a special show lined it up for your wonderful guest, wonderful man of God that God's going to uh, bless your hearts with today. But I want to say this, and I, and I want you to you hear me when I say this, that God is doing some awesome things in this country and in this world today. And we as God's people have to submit ourselves to God. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I just expect God to do powerful and great and mighty things before us being submitted unto him. All right. Now, uh, we want you to, before you seat back, just kind of relax yourself a little bit. And we're getting ready to have a good time. All right. I have on the phone with me that is none other than Elder Earl Harris of Shreveport, Louisiana. Pastor Harris, would you uh, just greet the people of southwest Louisiana and around the country today? Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so glad that you have us on today for, for greeting the people of God and those who like to listen to the Word of God. Amen. And we're so grateful to be here with the mission. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, Ella Harris, we're going to dove into some questions we have for you right quick. Now, uh, Ella Harris, when you, how, how long have you been uh, in the ministry now? Uh, I, I've been in the ministry since I was 18 years old, and I'm 75 now. Amen. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. So we are so thankful, but we been in Shreveport is in 69. Okay. Uh, we read it 40 years now, a little better. Amen. 41 years coming up. Yes, sir. And we are thankful for that. We, we worked on the Bishop John W. White for about three years as a junior pastor over young people. And we finally got into a ministry of our own. He's the kind of preacher that encourages young men to get involved in the gospel. And we've found a building here in the city and we went to work amen now it's yes sir and it's uh one of the first homeless shelters for families in the opera tech in the northern part of louisiana and we are very grateful for and thankful to god for the work that has been accomplished in this area amen amen now uh ella harris uh and we talk about how long you've been in the ministry now. When you got saved, when you uh, gave your life to God and, and, and heard the call of God, uh, what were the circumstances going on in your life that caused you to submit yourself to God? Well, glad you asked. I was only 16 years old when I came to the knowledge of uh, I was, it, Daddy was raising us. We was, he was a single parent, and, Amen. and uh, we was bad boys at the time. Wow! <laughs> and the Lord took that and uh, it turned it around, and I began to to hear prophecies that I, we was going to be dead before we were twenty one. Oh God! And the, from the community, and uh, and I didn't like that, and I began to seek God the more. And eventually, I was came in contact with some saved and sanctified people, and they began to talk to me and and and, and counsel with me. And I finally 
the one night I heard the Lord speaking through the, they call it the juke house. I okay. was asked one night, and the Lord said, if you die tonight, where will you spend eternity? Mm. I did not like the answer. All right. I had learned enough that I knew that I wouldn't be a pleasant place. And so we, we start seeking the Lord then, and eventually uh, I came to that little church. Amen. Where they was having service one night, the last night of the revival, and I gave my heart to the Lord. And I began, I began running for the Lord ever since. Amen. Amen. Now, Elias, now one of the things I want to uh, how did, ask you is that how did you uh, know it was God that called you to preach? What, what, what was going on for, and you knew that he was called, his hand was on your life and he was calling you? Oh, man, it, I asked some silly questions myself to find out whether God really wanted me to preach. First of all, I released, I had a burden of relief off of me when I finally surrendered to the preaching. I went on and surrendered to the idea of being a deacon, and uh, that did not release the burden. Okay. And, but when I did, about a year later, I went on to accept the call to the gospel. I saw uh, the word proclamation uh, like on a boxcars of, of a train and the, each word, each boxcar had the word, had each letter on it. Okay. And I looked the word up. I looked it up in the dictionary because I didn't know what it meant. And I saw that it meant proclaiming the word of God. Amen. And, uh, and many other incidents that take place it gave me to know that I was to preach the gospel. And, uh, and I went from there, and sure enough, when I accepted the call, the burden fell off me. Mm. And I felt like running for Jesus for the rest of my life. Amen. That's what we've been doing. Yes, sir. Now, now, when you say a burden, what do you, what do you mean say, for some of our audience who may not, you know, some you know, a lot of people that are, are listening at us, you know, we have uh, quite a few people. Uh, they, they're watching online, and, 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 and you got about five parishes here in South Louisiana watching, and, and everybody didn't grow up in church. So when we say a burden, I know what you're talking about, but the saints know what you're talking about. What do you mean when you say you had a burden on your heart? Well, I, I knew that I was supposed to preach. Okay. I was running. All right. Okay. And, and I was something like a Jonah running from the calling of God. And I knew I was I was I was felt like a convict running from the Lord, uh, from the law, and that's when I when I was arrested, he arrested me, and I surrendered, Amen. and I felt much relief after that happened. Amen. 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 Now, as 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 a you know, as a young man back then, you know, a lot of time. We look at it and we talk about the differences and how things are, are changed and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, young folks had to fight the devil back in your day just like they had to fight now, you know. And I think a lot of the young people don't think the older people understand what it is to fight the devil. You know, they thought everybody else was, thought we was born saved. <laughs> but that wasn't that wasn't the, that wasn't the case. You know, explain how, you know, being young back during those days. Uh, and you know, you had to walk away from friends and all kinds of stuff. Uh, also, you know, what 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 was that turning point? What was that like when you had to separate? When you understood you had to separate yourself uh, from the people you used to be uh, be around. Well, Bishop Thomas, it was quite an unusual uh, experience. I was a good dancer. Okay, and I enjoyed going out having a good time with my friends but and i had girlfriends okay and uh i had to when i accepted christ the news got around that i had changed okay earl got saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost and they watched me get off the school bus that monday morning and they they watched me from then on and i and i was able to to conduct myself in a way that young Christians should conduct themselves. Okay. And I was able, the Lord was there with me because it was quite 
a, quite a turnaround. I had, I had to learn more about the Lord, that is, and know about what the Scripture says and how we should should live. And I accepted it. wasn't a, It wasn't something I was forced to do. It was something I did gladly. I was very happy. I meant that I, instead of dancing for the devil, I went to, to dancing for the Lord. Instead of speaking vile words and cursing words, I began to speak uh, words that will enhance the ears of the listener. Amen. And it was even carrying my Bible. I began to carry my Bible to, along with my books. I had that Bible with me, and it was very interesting how the young people would gather around me at school and listen to me, tell them my testimony, and tell them how the Lord came into my life and how he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was great. You know, the old saints used to testify, and one of the things, I remember my old mother used to testify, she was saying, I thank God for keeping me, and he's not keeping me against my will, he's keeping me because I want to be kept, and, and that was just, that always uh, stuck with me, and another, another uh, preacher would preach, he said, some of y'all enduring y'all salvation, he said, but I'm enjoying mine. And so a lot of people don't understand the joy it is in serving God. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is absolutely joy in living for God. I, I often tell people, you don't know how to live until you let Jesus come in your life and teach you. Amen. All the other lives is, is we hidden and missing and uh, ups and downs. And yet we're going to have some ups and downs in the Christian walk. But at the same time, you know God is with you and you're doing the things that you know will get you where God wants you to be. Oh yes, it was. It was. My girlfriend came back. Okay. To church. She joined my herself, and but uh, it was to keep me from uh, from the other girls that was that in the church. I suppose for H, that's the way it turned out to be. But <laughs> by through it all, I was able to hold up, uh, and uh, I made mistakes. But I Amen. got up. I failed. Got back up, and God was with me. That's why I say God was a mother. For the, me as having no mother in my life at that time, on the separation, he guided me, he gave me the desire to want to be saved and want to live for the Lord. And I enjoyed it. Amen, amen, amen. Now, we have so many things that have gone on in, 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 in the house of God, in the church, and among uh, the people of God over the years. And... Uh, one of the things, you know, the Bible talks about the, the, the coming of the Lord and say that day won't come first uh, un, until there's first a falling away from the church, a falling away, a great falling away. And uh, and I've heard it in several ways. And, and one of the ways I've heard it is it don't mean a geographical falling away, like people not coming to church, but it means... Um, People falling away from the things of God, and and how do you see that the falling away, and how do you, how do you, in areas where you've seen where we are falling off at? Well, Bishop Thompson, it has been quite a change in so many people' lives. They yeah. have been falling away, yes, because some of it is based upon just not knowing how to deal with. The newcomers are how to go out and encourage people and uh, entice them to want to be a part of the, the body of Christ. Amen. People seem to be more relaxed that church has always been this regular coming together on the weekend and having a good time and going back to the same thing Monday morning. Amen. But we, we, we there's a falling away in the area of people becoming more traditional minded okay. rather than heavenly minded or okay. spiritual minded. Whereas we saw, we, we read about the, the problems Jesus had with the religious people at that time. We are having some of the same problems today. It, we so set with traditions and the ways of doing things that we've been done until we don't want to find how to really reach that millennial group, how to reach those young people, Amen. how to reach those lost people in a way to go where they are, sit where they sit, eat along with them, talk along with them, and listen to them and find out what it is that they really want. In other words, mission 
has been a big letdown, especially among uh, my group. Amen. It's been a big letdown, and we don't. We seem like missions are supposed to be for a certain part of the body of Christ. Amen. Whereas the simple statement is, Jesus told us to go into all the world and Amen. preach the gospel. He was talking to everybody. Yeah. And to every creature, and that's where we have been a great falling away, and and the people are hurting because they are not getting the salt that the, the church is supposed to be giving. We're not getting the light that the church is supposed to be shining, and we're not getting the help that the people that the church is supposed to be giving the lost world. We need love more than anything else. That has been a great falling away since the time I got saved now in the love area. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the Bible says that uh, 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 iniquity shall abound because the love of many is waxed cold. Is it because of the love of self? Is it because of the love of things? What if, What do you feel has, you know, contributed to that lack of love uh, in the body? <laughs> yes, well, it, it's some of all, some of all of us. Uh, see, we, when we become so wrapped up in ourselves mm -hmm. and and wrapped up in the things of the world. When I speak of the things of the world, the things that Christians uh, should not be involved in so much. Amen. The, uh, the sin walk of life, the the uh, covetousness, the envious, the the jealousy, the impatience, and the and the hatred. All of those types of things it doesn't match the church. It doesn't line up with God's way. God's will, not his word. Amen, amen. And, and these are the areas that has been a great falling away. Seeing instead of people of God wanting to be a light for the world to follow after, or be the example the world should follow after, it seems like they're going after the way the world is going more than the world going the way they should be going. Or we should be an example. And you know, it's something I really paid paid attention to, Pastor, because you know, so many are adapting, just adapting to the to the world. They're adapting to, uh, and and you know, we understand that you know through technology and other things that methods may change, but the message and the standard is not to change, and it's it's like uh, we must be like. Uh, the world. I, I, I heard, you know, one uh, singer, I, uh, Fred Hammond, I, and he was saying, a lot of times you have to be careful when people are saying, well, this is my ministry. And he said, a lot of time it has nothing to do with ministry. A lot of time they're just doing what they want to do and put ministry on it to validate it. Yes. <laughs> and, to, and to justify it before yes. people, you know, that it's not really, because he said, well, you know, he used to sing in a group with the guys and all this, and, and God uh, brought him into, you know, and doing concerts, and God brought him into doing praise and worship and really, really teaching the people how to worship God, how to praise God, and, you know, and not so much entertain folks. And the entertainment, the singing with the guy, that's what he wanted to do, but God called him into something else. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it is uh, very, 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 uh, important that the people um, understand what that means when you talk about um, uh, uh, our calling or to be different than the world. You know, wh what does that mean? I, I'm, I must be different than the world. What needs to be different? Well, our life needs to be different. Our, our method of dealing with people has to be different from the ways the world deals with people. What I mean by that, if, if if a person is going to be a Christian in the community, Amen. he has to be available to respond to the hurts and the pains of the people that comes to him. Or Amen. Her. Amen. Uh, just for an example, I was had a guest in town, and I was talking with him on the phone. He was in the motel, and. Uh, we passed by a young a man, I'm 61 years old, lying beside the sidewalk. Mm. And I told him, I said, look, I, I, I have to get off the phone. I got to turn around and go see what's going on with this young man. This man. And I did. And uh, after I got there, he, she said, I'm sick. 
I said, what are you? And he explained to me he needed me to call 911. Okay. And uh, and I did. And uh, come to find out the man was having a heart attack. Oh, God. People was passing him up as though he was drunk right inside the road. Mm. And I was so glad that I stopped and helped that man because if I had seen the news the next day and found out that man was having a heart attack and died and I knew that I passed right by him, I would have been some hurt person. Yes. But by me being open to help, open to listen, open to my God. give a helping hand, it changed my momentum, it changed my way of thinking. I didn't, I, where I had to go to, I was, I was trying to get to an assignment yes. that really needed to be Fulfilled. Yes, yes. But I postponed that assignment. Yet I, and then I was talking to my my friend that I had seen. He from out of town. He and he was just we were just enjoying talking to each other. Amen. And I put all of that on hold. Not saying that 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 that, that that's the way uh, uh, every person that's not saved would do that. I, that's not. There are some good people out there yes. that would do the same thing. But at the same time, if a person is wrapped up in a sinful way of thinking yes. and so involved in his ways and selfish, it can crowd that kind of a compassion out of his heart. Mm. So we have to be open to the love of God, open to helping, open to ministering to the needs of the people in our area. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, Pastor, that is, that's, that's amazing. You know, And, you know, something sometimes... I've discovered, and and we're gonna we, we're gonna we're gonna get to some things about your ministry and some things you're doing there in Shreveport now. But I'm having such a good time, boy. This is this is this is good to me. But one of the things I've noticed, and, and you know, a lot of people when they get into ministry, uh, they're looking at man. I'm gonna have a new car. I'm a, a young man that I watched grow up. Say when he got them prophecies about. He's going to preach the, uh, preach the word. And he said, wow, man, the preacher dressed the best. He uh, drive the best car. Say when it's time to eat, the people bring him his food first. You know, he was a kid when all this was going on. He get his food first and, 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 and they bring him water and things like that. But they don't understand the sacrifice and those times of going through. And I notice, I notice that the times I am going through a struggle or I am really uh, dealing with something, and during those times, or the time when people most need help or need my help when I need to be taking care of my business myself and all these folks need my help. I mean, the, if I'm short on cash, you ain't believe how many times that phone is going to ring. I, I, I Praise God, I, I need you. I'm in an emergency right now. <laughs> and and you look and said, oh, God, you know, I hate to say no, but, <laughs> you know, it ain't there. You know, and they don't. People don't understand the sacrifice or the uh, the pull up on you when you want to be a blessing or you want to help or you want to do this and you're just not in a position to do. So you got to make a decision on right. what to do. You know, kind of, kind of tell us about some uh, uh, maybe a, a trying time where you've been in. I mean, you just mentioned one about you were doing something, but what about that time when your family? really is in need and then there's somebody else in need and you got to make a decision you got to go to god and say lord what do i do <laughs> that's quite it's quite familiar yes we uh, what came to mind while you was talking is i lost my wife my first wife after 11 years of marriage my god and we was intending to open this place up and we did have a name and we were struggling with a name for this particular place. We hadn't opened it yet. Okay. Getting ready to open, right? We had labored around here about you know, several months trying to get it cleared off and everything. And the, the night we decided to go home and to open it up the next day, she passed in, in, that night. My God. And, uh, and, 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 and we were, was quite devastated with that experience. And uh, but we had labored so beautifully together all the years. She had a, she had, had a, a heart condition that okay. she was born with, only thirty years old. Mm. But but God told her mother before 
I right after I told her she had passed her mother, I told him call her mother, believing about about fit about hundred miles from me. And she said, Well, Ella Harris, the, uh, if the Lord bless you with another wife, even at the film, don't you turn her down. I did not want to hear that. Amen. That was a tough time for me to hear such of a message yes. coming from her mother. Yes. And I knew she loved her daughter. Yeah, yeah. And uh but then after the night, after that night rolled around, the church did come and visit me. And a young lady that showed up right after uh, they was getting ready to leave and, and leave, and, they, and she was from Baton Rouge, by, okay. by, uh, you know, by south of, 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 of Shreveport. Yeah. And she told me, if, I need, if you need me, Ella Harris, give me a call. Okay. And my little daughter, only nine years old, took on a 4 H club project of making a potato pie. And we failed in the process. After all the ingredients and we salt around to, to get to get it done. And so I had to call her. And I called the missionary and she gave me her number. And she began to work with me. And, and we had done buried my wife, had the film and everything. And, about 15 other children had joined the mission. Okay. Because they liked the, the little setup and everything. Right before, right before Christmas. And my wife now came over under the leading of God and began to work with me and these children. And uh, and I just did not want to, uh, words to be spoken against me and married so quick. But after I heard my grand, my, my mother-in-law voice, and uh, and and she must have seen this was going to happen. Okay. And my and then my wife had told me that I was going to have more children, and I didn't understand that. Okay. She, but then we went on, kept working together. She kept looking, kept doing good things around us, and I went. We went on and made it up to get married. Amen. And we married about around three or four months after my wife had passed. Okay. And she, definitely we had. It worked out. It's, it's 40 years we celebrated our 40th anniversary this past Sunday. Amen. Five one younger, wonderful young men have been added to our family, and they are all doing well. They grew up in this mission. Amen. And that's, that's all they know. And they was laughed at, poked fun at for growing up in a mission. But now we are blessed with grandchildren that were great grew grew up here and they we had them we had bible study practice every evening and we prayed and we helped other people they had seen other people come in and live here with us and uh we was different it was quite a different experience they talked about that today and so we took a bad situation and Amen. let god turn it into a beautiful situation and so we we have been challenged many ways in many times. The bills have been paid. We have not had to sit out on the streets not one night. Amen. The Lord has been blessing us ever since. But we do have other responsibilities we do need to do. We have buildings we haven't started working on yet. We have land we haven't begun to produce yet. Uh, 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 seeing the production coming from it. That's why we need funds. We need more than what we're getting coming in now in order to take care. We have other ministers, young men coming out of prison that needs our help. We we have people calling on us from different areas now, and that's why we went on and let the Lord put crime-free community revivals on. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have crime-free community revivals and I guess people, a lot of people think we're crazy for doing that, but the Lord told me to do it. Okay. And uh, and and so we're doing that every week, and we're looking for people who will want to come in and volunteer in Holy Kingdom uh, building ministry. Amen. Will help our community become that crime free. I know it seems to be obvious to say crime free community as mean and hateful as people are today, but the Lord say. Crime-free community. Amen. And, and his people are, are not criminals. We are, we may be looked upon as criminals because we we doing crazy things. But after all said and done, 
God's people are not violent people. God's yes. people are not criminals. And if we could get criminals converted to Christ, yes. we would have done a great thing. We get sinners converted to being Christian, we would have done a great thing. One sinner causes that repentance causes angels to rejoice in heaven. And that's what we're trying to do. We want angels to stay rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, and, and now, and as the Lord begin to give that to you to have a mission and not just a traditional ministry or traditional church, you know, how, how was that? How did God give that to you? Well, the Lord gave that to me in the early emphasis. He put that in my heart very early, even when I was in military. When I came out of military, came to Shreveport, uh, I worked very hard while I was in the military as a minister. And I, when, I, when I told my wife, the Lord is telling me to go back home to America and work on the ghettos, work on the people that needs help, work on the, the, the down and charred people and encourage them. Just like America went over in Germany and uh, had that war in World War II and uh, went back and rebuilt Germany and made it look so beautiful, I thought about the ghettos in our country mm. and how so neglected they are in many cases, in many ways. And, and that burden fell on me. And uh, I landed here in, in, the, in this area where right next door to, uh, I guess you say, a hundred, uh, a project that housed a hundred families. Okay. And, uh, we, we, we just opened right across the streets from them. We just opened up and went, went to work. God made a way for us. And uh, we, need, we need all kind of system. It's quite natural. It's not a traditional way of church. Of church. Preacher does things in terms of church work, but God gave it to me to do it, and Amen. It's, it's been it's been quite a blessing, quite Amen. a blessing, to knowing that we are helping somebody. Yeah, I guess wild than the people I help it look like from, <laughs> because of the joy that comes from helping others. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, now, Elder, you know we we there. That is that is wonderful. That is that is that is that is uh, wonderful. That is dedication. And so uh, now, let me, let me ask you a little bit more about it now. You say uh, your crime-free revivals. You have those every week, or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay, okay. Now, Saturday you, and Sunday, we out on the field. Okay. So kind of explain that to us. You have, you have somebody come in and preach, or you preach Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? And then you go out and 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 and, and soul win. How how does that go? How does that work? Right. Oh yes. On 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 Sundays, we are uh, we open at seven thirty a.m. and uh, we have our holy training for about thirty minutes, and then we following that is a crime free service. We do services and encouraging people that normally wouldn't go to church encouraging them to get involved as much as we possibly can. And then we go out on the on the field, pass our literature, and uh, set up displays, mission display tables. And this and it has, we have over, uh, you might say, over 50 folders full of different subject materials that we pass out and demonstrate along with toys and uh, little snacks on the table where children could come and encourage the parents to come and bring them to the table. And we then while we're there, they get to literature that's helpful, crime prevention. And uh, in the, the, some of the subjects on temptation, on building relationships, uh, on the poems for encouragement, we got uh, looking at one now is what does the Bible say about family unity hmm. and the once I am, it goes on and talks about what I am in Christ, what we can be in the Lord, and we just, uh, different, different uh, subjects, ABCs of salvation, and uh, repent quickly, you know, how to repent quickly, and believe God's word, Amen. and uh, uh, the list goes on, and this does, we do this, and this, when people get a chance to, to read, give donations, and uh share their problems or share their concerns concerning their areas and how they would appreciate having 
search man in their community. <laughs> the one experience we had doing that, one gentleman came by, picked up a literature, and uh, he went to his car, and he came back, and he went to talking with me. He was very serious, faced it, very serious. Okay. And he told me, you have messed up my day, Reverend. <laughs> I said, what you mean? He said, I was going to commit a crime. <laughs> and after I read this material, I'm confused now. Oh, my. And, and tears are running down his cheek. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, and Lord. And I, I led this young man to Christ in that person, in that precious moment. Because all the experience was not like that. Uh, mm. We others, we had one time we was there, and two men came in with black uniforms on with guns in their hand, robbed the place, and took off with the money. Oh, God. From the robbery. And thank God no shooting was was was, was uh, taking place there. And uh, so, but we take a chance in order to win a soul. We know the Lord said we are like sheep yes. among wolves. And we cannot be afraid. Like I said, perfect love cancels out fear. Yes. And I think that's one of the greatest things the church is afraid to go out because they're afraid of contacting people who may not be like them. Yes. And but that's you re, re, run across that every day. People that's not like you. Yes. And you have to help them to see the light. And so I have many stories I can tell. I wouldn't want to take up all your time <laughs> telling all these stories about <laughs> mission. Amen. That, that, I, 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 that was very interesting, uh, especially, you know, around the Opelousas area and in the Lafayette area. Uh, there is a lot of crime. There's a lot of, uh, uh, I believe over in Opelousas, they had um, four or five stores on the same street. Each night, one of them would get robbed. I mean, and they were close wow. to each other. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I just... Uh, <laughs> You know, this, that's something that, that happens. You know, I have a, uh, a couple of pastor friends that's actually police officers also. And uh, they told me that. And I remember one of them told me, says, his police training taught him some things. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, in the middle of July. And it was hot. And you know how hot it is in here in Louisiana uh, during July. And he says that the man... Man came in there hot as it was with a with a uh, overcoat on, with a trench coat. So he said he knew something <laughs> was about to try to transpire. So uh, you know, and and those are risks. You know, a lot of time that 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 we run in in working for ministry. But those are the people we're trying to get saved. Jesus said, right. "They that are whole need not a physician." Absolutely. And, and, and sometimes we confuse ministry with ambition. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, was so, I was just so blessed by the testimony you gave earlier. Uh, it's like uh, we, we hear about it all the time, about the Good Samaritan, and how, you know, the, 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 the priest and the Levite passed him by, and the Samaritan was the one that stopped to help the man. There are people that need help. And I, 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 one of the things I see is that we're mostly interested in being around people uh, that, uh, or we're not interested in being around people that actually need our help. We we, we, we want to be in a we want to be in a social club rather than ministry. And I think that's I think right. that's dangerous. I think that's a dangerous uh, mindset to be. I, you know, I look back to when my father passed when I was twelve, and out of all those people at the funeral uh, saying great things about my father, I can't remember any of them just walking up to me afterwards asking me how I was doing. <laughs> you know, and I, and I you know as a twelve year I was devastated. You know, I, 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 you know, I remember my father getting uh, on his knees praying, and I'd get out, I'd pray with him, and you know, I, I that was, he was such, he was so important to me, and but I, I can't remember somebody just, you know, now they were, if I did something wrong, they was all over me. You need to stop doing that. Why are you doing that? You don't have no business doing that. But you know, I don't remember nobody coming say, just how you feeling, how you doing, right? And and, and so, right. but how did we, how did we lose that? Did we lose that? 
did the preacher stop preaching on it and, 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 and that brought to con and stop bringing that type of conviction to the church? How did we lose that? Bishop, we must come to, to grips with the idea we are living in the last days. Amen. The Bible did say the, the love of many will wax cold. But he also says he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. God. Yes, yes. And, and, and we'll, when we think about the crucial hours that we're living in, we also have to think about the blessings that comes with the problems. So what, what we have to do, instead of the problem squeezing the life out of us, we have to squeeze the life out of the problems and see the glory of God that comes out of them. And that's what Jesus did. Instead of him bickering and crying about people slapping on him and spitting on him and, and, he, and, and, and putting the throne of crown on him, he robbed that experience to go on and do what he came to do and not lose focus on Calvary. Because mm. he knew if he made it to Calvary mm. and they, they stick him in the ground and put him, they nail the nails on him and lift him up, hallelujah, he's going to draw all men out to him. Amen. Amen. And so, so we have to look at our problems as side that purges us and make us better. And, and this is the good news. We need to carry it to the streets and, uh, and let the people who are hurting know that you're not hurting alone. Mm. But there's a purpose for your life. And there's a reason for God putting you in this earth. And he could have made a dog. He could have made a frog. He could have made anything. But he decided to make you. And you are special. Hey, go and right. we got to, to make them understand that. Mm. Because I tell them that I often tell my children... When they don't start going to sleep, I'm gonna like give me the Lord give me something to say. And let them know that fifty million sperms left your father. I don't care who he was, whoever your father was, and entered into your mother's womb, and only one of them got her pregnant, and that's you. <laughs> and that means you're one out of fifty million. Yes, and yes. Listen up, listen up, and listen. Let me tell you how to become that that joint that God that, let that joint come alive in you that God had put in you. You are genius. You are something remarkable. And uh, and they, they, you can see them start sitting up straight in their seat. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to reach the hurting. We have to let them know that they're not alone and that somebody cares for them. Mm. So that's why it's good to always have something to help people with. Yes. And that's why missionaries are not only needed in Africa and the third world countries, and they are also needed on the streets of America. Yes, 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 yes. And now, uh, how have you over the years, uh, how have you balanced uh, your ministry and your marriage, or your ministry and your family? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Cause it can, it can, it can, it can, it can really be a challenge sometimes. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is why the Lord had to send me a wife. Amen. And uh, and the other women, the first ladies, uh, they really, they really kind of frown at my wife sometimes because she always in mission. She glad to cook for people that come to the mission. She glad to go out with me to help me with the mission set up and she it's all she just she's a, in other words she's an angel Amen. That came into my life and so it has worked out real well now i have gotten some slack from my children okay and that after they grew up they didn't get all get saved and they become very bitter towards what dad and mom is doing why y'all do this why y'all bring us here why y'all why y'all put a razor up in a mission? And my oldest son is very hard on me about that one. And okay. but then at, the, at the end of the day, he tells me, Dad, I'm so glad you brought us up to where you did. <laughs> <laughs> because the trials that we're going through, if it had not been for you and that mission, Ken, and talking about mission to minister to the whole man, mentally, social, physical, and spiritual, said I wouldn't be a supervisor the day on my job. Amen. All right. All right. Yes, because he takes that and go on. And I, I, I'm so grateful for 
the good results that we have here. And uh, we, but I, I had to get my son to the hospital once, and he had you know had had a, a, a problem with with uh, his uh, in his body. And I saw a young man that had once been at this mission. Mm -hmm. He was being marched down the hall by police on each side of him, chains around his legs, handcuffed on, and he hollered out to me, Ella Harris, this is me, he called his name out, and I recognized who he was. Mm. And he says to me, they got me this time, Ella Harris. I said, what you mean, Ron? He says, me and my friends that I listened to, that laughed at me when I was working with you in the garden across the streets from the mission. And they shamed me out from working with you. And I end up going with them to rob a store. Mm. And the lady reached for a gun and I beat her to it and she didn't survive. Oh God. I said, what? I just dropped down in tears for him. And that was one of the tragic things I, I've heard coming from some of the mm. children, but I couldn't oh, hide it to him. He was reared in a broken family, and uh, and I had been having some problems with him. Okay, and, uh, he wouldn't wouldn't come as regular as he should have come to help with the to, for me to help him out. So what it is, people really need somebody to mentor them. Yes, fatherless children are hurting. M uh, widows are hurting. There's many golden opportunities for us to minister in these last and evil days. And that's why missions cannot allow themselves to be tradition-minded to the point where we overlook people and uh, pass by the ghettos and pass over with the, in the superhighways and never go down into the trenches and try to see where you can be a helping hand. Mm. And... Uh, I'm so grateful for my grandson here. He's, uh, he's, he's here with me. I told him I wanted him to come and, and uh, give us testimony. He, he, he has some rough experiences, and uh, if you could allow him a few moments, and uh, he can, uh, can give him at least two or three minutes. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, he's here. Okay. His name is Minister Matthew Collier. Amen. And, uh, he's my one of my dear grandsons. He's the one that... that uh, and grew up here in the mission. So okay. I bless you, Matt. Hello. God bless you. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Hey, Amen. Just give us a couple of minutes of your testimony there. Yes, sir. Uh, well, as as my granddad was saying, mission is all I know. I was raised in it, uh, reared in it. This is pretty much all I know. Um, you know, and my mom sort of kind of strayed away, but. Um, you know, so we we were exposed to a lot of different things, and uh, one of the things that we were um, were exposed to, you know, was was growing up and just dealing with you know um, the projects and just dealing with drugs and just so much other stuff, and uh, um, you know we we ended up going to foster care and just um, facing several different challenges in our lifestyle, um, and then when I reached adulthood, I had a daughter. Uh, my daughter was murdered in 2011 oh, God. Uh, at 10 months old, and the following year I became incarcerated uh, from accusations from the person who killed her, which was her sister-in-law, well, my sister-in-law, uh, her aunt. Um, ended up spending five years in prison, and this past August um, I was released. And to tell you just about uh, faith, um, you know, the Bible says those who desire to live a godly life will face persecution. So I say yeah. my innocence, but beyond all of that, uh, the, the, the things that I put in my mouth and, and then to my spirit during my incarceration, I've seen them come to pass. And having a grandfather who has always taught us how to work, 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 
I didn't come home with the mindset that I was going to work for anybody. Uh, so I came home, and, and you know, others would, oh, yeah, that's just jailhouse talk. Well, what people got to understand about me is that I had God before jail. I had God during jail. Yes. And I took God with me outside of jail. Amen. So today, seven months later, I have my food trailer. Um, man, we're doing some awesome things with the food trailer. And, and, and to do five years in prison, come out of convicted Seven young black men. I'm only 25 years old. I'll be 26 next month. And to have my own business is a testimony of what God can do, and it's also a testimony of what a praying family can do. Yes. So, uh, man, whoever's listening and just wherever this may be broadcasted, it doesn't matter about where you come from. It's, it matters where you're going. Yes. You know, we face a lot of things in our life, but we got to understand. Um, that 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 it all works together as the Bible tells us, it all works together for our good. Yes. So ultimately, man, just my encouragement is that if we will have people would get involved, we can stop this recidivism and we can stop young blacks and not just even young blacks anymore. We can stop young men, young uh, 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 children from entering into the system. Yes. And even for those who slip through the cracks and go to the system, we as believers, I believe, uh, need to step up and really get involved uh, so that they won't go back. So my mission in life now, not only through my own business and my own family, but to go and encourage somebody else that uh, you don't have to go. And even if you do go, that when you get out, you can stay out. So, um, you know, I ask myself every day, what is my mission today? Um, what is what, what what is my purpose for living today? And just as a testimony is that if we would all realize that the sin sin is the is, is the root of it all. It's the yes. problem of it all. Uh, we, 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 we we attack, you know, police shoot this person and oh this person did this and did that. Sin is the root of the problem, and if we get to the root of the problem, then we can truly enjoy a crime-free community. We can enjoy a poverty-free community. We can enjoy just a community the way Acts describes it, Amen. where they had all things in common, where the church is responsible for the community. And so oftentimes now we see the government taking care of everything when it was never the government's job, it was the church job. So I believe that if we get back to the root of what, you know, being a Christian is all about, then we would see that our mission is to spread the good news and not just pray for someone when they say they're hungry, but to give them food. So yes. even with every meal that I sell, I give away some stuff I'm able to sow into people's lives. So that's just my testimony to say, okay, the Bible says to train up a child is the way he should go and when he's old, she shall not depart. Does not mean he won't straight. Does not mean that he won't experience life. Does not even mean that he won't spend five years in prison. But it does mean that um, if you train him right and you teach him right for wrong, that he will go back to it. And that's what has been done for me. Like I said, though I stand in my innocence, it's not whether or not I did it or not. It's what shall I do from this point forward. Mm. And every day that I wake up and I see that food trailer, every meal that I cook, every time I cut the grease on or I cut the grill on, it's a testimony of who God is first and foremost. Yes. Two, of my own ambition and willpower. And three, what Christ in the community can actually do. So. Amen. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Praise God. God bless you. Thank God. Thank God. All right. This morning. Amen. Well, we just about out of time, Brother Harris. My God, that hour would have went a lot faster than we thought it was going to be. But listen, listen, uh, I just want to thank you, number one, for asking, you know, a lot, uh, taking the invitation to come. Now, if somebody is in the Shreveport area and want to come by or somebody want to contact you, uh, could you just give the phone number for them to call you to get more information about your ministry and how they can help you, or what, what it, just uh, and or address where they could stop by, or, or you know right. where they can mail you a letter? Right quick, we got we got under a minute. Right, it's the Maddie Harris Mission Center, forty-two fifty-four Illinois Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana, seven eleven zero nine. Our phone number is Eric Code 318-635-4442. All right. You can reach me, and, and we, we'll be glad 
to hear from you. All right. God bless you. Uh, we're just about out of time here, but I want to say, can, can you hold on just a second, LS, while I close it out? Yes, sir. All right. God bless you. Those of you that are with us and, 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 and in the uh, watch us today, I want you to reach out. We're going to put this back on Facebook and we're going to put it on Twitter. And uh, uh, My Covenant Love, we're going to put it on all of our social media websites and, and LinkedIn. And we want you to uh, contact this man of God. And we want you to just, uh, you know, we have to change. We have to pick it up on ourselves to make sure we're changing a generation. All right, this is Bishop Albert Thompson. Uh, we will be back next week. My wife will be here Monday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I will be back next Wednesday, uh, the 28th. Our... Uh, it's going to be Mr. Jake, Mr. Jake from uh, Liberia. All right, Mr. Jake Durant from Liberia will be on next Wednesday. God bless y'all, and I will see y'all next week. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God.